Hey folks, Glenn May here with BassResource.com. Today I want to talk to you about fishing plastic baits, fishing plastic worms, those type of things. Now if you've been fishing them for a while, you're bound to pick up a few tips from this video. And if you're new to fishing, if you want to try out fishing plastic lures and baits, this video is definitely for you. What I want to do is talk to you a little bit about the kind of equipment, the universal setup, if you will, for fishing plastic lures. And then I'm going to take you through some of the different techniques that work for all kinds of plastic baits. So let's talk about equipment starting with a rod. What I have here is a medium heavy power fast action tip rod. Seven foot. This is arguably, you know, the, the Leatherman. This is the universal tool that you can use for fishing all kinds of baits. Matter of fact, I've got three or four rods like this in my rod locker right now, all rigged up with a couple different baits. This is, this is your standby. This, this is the, if, if you're starting out getting rods and reels, this is the one you want to start with, really. It's a seven foot, medium heavy power, fast action rod. Paired with it here is a, just your, you know, bait casting reel. Anywhere, anytime, you know, any gear above six, three to one is really a, a good gear ratio. This one's about seven one, I think it is. You want a good, strong drag system and a smooth casting reel. Something that's easy to adjust. Works just fine. You know, you don't have to go the most expensive out there, but don't go cheap either. You just want a really good drag system. That's the most important thing. Really nice, smooth drag system. That's, that's key. And then line, 15 pound line. I use copolymer line. Braid, I know a lot of people like braid, but braid isn't all that universal. It tends not to do as well in rocks. It can get frayed and dinged up in there, nicked. So what I like to do is, is use copolymer line. Fluorocarbon is great. It's also a bit expensive. We're looking for a universal setup that works in all kinds of conditions. I think copolymer works best for that. You can use fluorocarbon if you want, if your budget lets you do that. But I'm not getting fancy here. We're not using liters or anything like that. It's just straightforward, easy fishing. Tied onto that is your plastic bait. I've got you can use plastic worm, any kind of thing, anything you want that's made out of plastic. This happens to be the Rage Tail Rage Bug. One of my favorites. Absolutely love it. <laughs> what I'm using here is a 3 8 ounce tungsten bullet sinker tied on with a 3 out hook. That is your universal setup. It's pegged with a bobber stopper right there, if you can see that. That's universal. You can, you can swap this bait out and put just about any bait on there that's made out of plastic and you don't have to re-rig everything. So that's, it's, it's very versatile. That's what I like the most about this. So that's your setup. That's your rig. Let's talk a little bit about how to fish these baits, any kind of plastic bait. The first and most easy one to do is just cast it out there. Just cast it and let it sink. Flip the bale over and what you want to do is watch that line and you want to be in contact with it, so don't let it fall completely on slack line, but main, maintain contact with it. So semi-slack, reel up some of the slack, and feel it with your rod tip. A lot of times the bite will come and you'll feel that through your rod tip. You feel that doink, right, you know, or bump bump right through your, through your rod. But oftentimes the bite happens when you are just looking at the line. Watch where that line enters the water and if you see it bump, twitch, go sideways, it, if it does something that you didn't do, Odds are a fish did that, so you better set the hook. The other thing I want you to do when you cast out like that is pay attention to how long it takes before it hits the bottom. Cast it out there, and if you have to, do some sort of countdown, some cadence. One, two, three, four. Okay, there, it hit the bottom, all right? So now I know about how deep it is there. And if you're going along fishing the shoreline, and every time you cast, it's about a four count, five count, then when you're cast, all of a sudden it's one, and it stops. A fish probably just opened his mouth and grabbed it and he's just sitting there. And you never felt the thing. But because you're paying attention to that fall, set the hook, <laughs> okay? Swings are free. If you're not sure if it's a fish or not, set the hook. 
Um, and speaking of that, before I get to the couple other uh, techniques here, when you set the hook, here's the deal. What a lot of people do, they do a field game with the fish, right? They throw it out there, it falls, they're in contact with it, they're in the hook set position, ready to go. And what they do is they're, they're, they think there's a fish there, they feel something going on, and so they reel down, they're tightening on the line, they're feeling, and then they feel another tug. They're like, okay, that's a fish, Ugh! and then they set the hook, right? That's not a very good hook set. If, you're, if your line is already tight, what's gonna happen is the fish, he's got his mouth on it, okay? He's clamped down on it, and if your line's already tight, you've probably snugged up that, the, the bullet sinker right up to the inside of his mouth. So if you set the hook, what you're gonna do is turn his mouth around. You're gonna turn his head. You, the bait really isn't gonna move very far, if, if at all, in his mouth, so the hook really isn't gonna set. If this has ever happened to you, you're fishing a plastic bait, you're fishing, the, fishing it all the way back, I mean, sorry, you set the hook, you, you're fighting the fish back, and all of a sudden, boink, it comes loose. You're like, what the heck? And you bring it all the way back, and you look, and guess what? The hook hasn't even come out of the bait. Well, that's what happened. Okay, you, set, you hit the, the sinker on the inside of his mouth, and he never got his mouth open enough for that hook to penetrate. So here's what I want you to do when you set the hook. When you cast it out there, you're ready to, first of all, the hook set position is you have it down here. But what happens, and I'll show you this in, when you're, when, in the next techniques, you're lifting up, and if you feel a bite, reel down, but don't reel up tight. Reel down until you, you almost have it all the way uh, tight, then set the hook, and set it hard, okay? What you're doing is you're throwing slack in the line. Or if you've, if you've say for instance, you're feeling that game, you're doing that feel game, if you feel that, that light's tight, you feel that fish, drop the rod tip, then set it. Throw some slack in it. Then what you're gonna do with that is your rod's gonna gain momentum and speed and power before it starts to move the bait in the fish's mouth. Then when you do that, you're gonna pile drive that hook into his mouth. If this bait is up against the inside of his lips, right inside his mouth, if you set it up that hard, this cone shape, it's actually gonna shoot through his mouth. It will have enough power to go through his mouth and then the hook will catch and you'll get a good hook set. So always have a little bit of slack in your line before you set the hook. That's, that's key, that's, that's key to fishing these baits. You're gonna catch a lot more fish if you change your hook set that way. All right, so let's talk about a couple other retrieves. So first thing you do is you cast it out there. Let it sink, you're casting it to a bush or a dock or something. It hits the bottom. What you wanna do is let it sit for a second and just keep the line tight and see if a fish comes and picks it up. And you can sit there for five seconds, 10 seconds, or a minute, it's, it's up to you. But I, I usually let it sit for a couple seconds. And if I don't feel anything, then what I'll do is I'll reel down tight and I'll lift it up with the rod tip and then I'll let it sink on semi-slack line. You can see I'm reeling it, but all I'm doing is I'm reeling up the slack line as I bring the rod tip down. I'm not reeling the bait. Lift it up again to about the 9, 10 o'clock position and let it drop right back down. If he doesn't hit in the first couple of bites, or first couple of pumps, then I, I reel it back in. Most of the time the bite happens as the bait is falling. So that technique works really well when the fish are active and they're hitting it when the bait is falling. However, there's other techniques. If they don't want to hit it while, it's, while you're doing it that way, another technique is once it hits the bottom, you want to scoot the bait along the bottom. Keep it on the bottom, crawl it on the bottom. The way to do that, keep your rod tip down, and don't move it with the reel, just move it with the rod tip. Just slowly move it with the rod tip. Now you read up the slack as you bring your rod tip back. Now you're ready to, to bring it back again. Just slowly move it with the rod tip. Now you have slack in it, you reel up that slack as you bring your rod tip back. You're just crawling it along the bottom. Okay, that looks like a little bait, bait fish, maybe a sculpin or a crawdad scurrying along the bottom. A lot of times the bass will chase it and they'll pick it up right off the bottom. If you get that hooks, if you get that bite, again, if you're all the way out here and you get that bite, reel up first, get that slack, and then set the hook. Don't try to hook set all the way back here. You're gonna bring it all the way back, and now you're like, oh, you can't really set the hook. There's nothing left. You don't have any power. Okay, so and that's the same thing whenever you cast. If you notice, I, I do it instinctively now, but it casts, first thing as I do, I bring, bring the rod tip down. I'm ready for the hook set position. Don't keep your rod up way up here. You have nothing left. There's nothing to hook set with. Keep it down here. All right, so. Let's give you another, another technique. 
This what I like to do is, I like to, to bring the, the bait back, I like to swim it back a little bit. What I do is I just keep it right off the bottom and I'm slowly reeling it, keeping it just a few inches off the bottom. And this works really well, especially if you're fishing, say, in hydrilla or you're fishing it in milfoil. You want to keep it right off the top of that where the fish are buried in there, you'll, you'll entice them to come back out. So make a nice long cast, let it get down to it. And then all you're going to do is you're going to bring your rod up, tip up a little bit and this varies. It depends on the, uh, how deep the bait is and how deep the vegetation is. Sometimes you got to have your rod tip up here. But I like to keep it down as low as I, as I can get away with and just slowly swim it, just slowly reel it over the top of the vegetation. And wait for that bite. Again, get ready for the hook set position. Get ready to, to set that hook whenever that fish bites it. Because, boy, you better be ready. Because <laughs> when those fish hit it, you got to slam it home. Because again, the hook point's text posed. It's buried a little bit in this, in this bait. Those are the basic retrieves that I use when I'm fishing plastic baits. For the most part, you can catch fish doing any of those retrieves, be it you're fishing docks, you're fishing weeds, you're fishing submerged trees, whatever. It's the same different types of techniques, or same techniques for different types of baits, whether it's a, a rage bug like this, or you're fishing a plastic worm, or a lizard, or anything like that. Anyway, I hope those tips helped. For more tips and tricks like this and for the answers to all your questions about bass fishing, visit BassResource.com.